I will introduce SMP technique. SMP technique exercise with only 12 and 14 French and with irrigation suction sheets, with this small size sheets, and with this continued lactive suction, and they cause really, really less bleeding and the lower pressure, and they cause really, really less urosepsis. And then with this suction sheets, and the make stone fragments removal effectively. And then shorten operation time. And after operation, and the patient is totally tubeless, no tubal, no stand, no foreless catheter, and this real day surgery, and they make a patient very fast recovery. And then no need for extra stone extraction devices. And then greatly reduce the medical cost. Uh, today our guest is uh, the distinguished professor Go Hua Zhang from Guangzhou. He's the head of uh, urology department. Uh, let me first introduce him. He completed his Master of Urology training in 1992 and his PhD in Urology in 2000. He has done a clinical endurology fellowship at University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas, 2007. He's an experienced endurologist with more than 15,000 endurological procedures, including all kinds of PCNL, rigid URS, and RARS procedure and urolaparoscopic procedure. He's a leader in China. Uh, he also uh, designed with his colleague a uh, mini PCNL technique, namely uh, Chinese mini PCNL. You perform more than 30,000 Chinese mini PCNL surgery with good clinical outcome. You invented a new minimally invasive device and technique in the treatment of mid-sized renal stone. You coined super mini PCNL, combining active irrigation and suction in same, through the same sheath, which is totally innovative technique and a real revolution for mini perk technique. He organized and led more than 330 endurological stone management workshops throughout the world. And you have trained more than 3,000 Chinese residents and more than 110 international residents and fellow from 36 countries, including US, UK, Morocco, Egypt, Qatar, Kuwait, and several other countries. Uh, your training uh, that you provide in Eurocenter was certified by Endoirology Society Fellowship Program since 2014. And you are a member of the urology division of Chinese Medical Association, and you are a member of editorial board of the BGU International Urolipiasis, the Chinese section. You are a regular guest and speaker at Challenge of in Urology annual meeting, and you have gained five research projects for stone disease from National Natural Science Foundation, and you have more than 100 academic paper in national and international journals, 10 books about stone disease to your credit. You published recently a book with Dr. Sarika, Kamal Sarika from Turkey, Percutaneous Nephrolithotomy. We'll talk about it later. And you have finished a national survey of stone disease incidents and related risk. And you set up a normal value for 24 hours urine in Chinese population. As for basic research, you did focus on the relation between calcium channel, estrogen, and stone formation. Another outstanding academic achievement is the setup together with the Professor Zhang Konye and the Professor Kamal Sarika of the International Alliance of Urolithiasis, IAU, in uh, 2012. This international organization is dedicated to research and treatment of stone disease. More than 450 urologists from 80 countries have become a member of the IAU. And uh, a, you have so far organized uh, eight meetings uh, in China and, and other countries, including Nepal, India, Turkey, 
And uh, la this year was supposed to be London, but because of the circumstances of pandemic, it was postponed. Uh, this organization provides an academic exchange platform for all stone disease doctors in the world. <laughs> Professor Zong, welcome to the Bridge in Science. That's a very outstanding achievement in your career. Okay. So, welcome this morning and we'll uh, talk uh, through different uh, steps of this interview. First of all, China was the epicenter. It was the ground zero of this pandemic. How were you coping with this during this pandemic? How were you treating your patient? Uh, is there any delay in the treatment or diagnosis of the patient during this particular period? Uh, actually, in this uh, uh, difficult uh, and challenging this time, it's very, very difficult uh, for every urologist uh, to manage stone disease because of COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, actually, uh, at, the, at the beginning of this year, uh, uh, while uh, virus uh, outbreak in China, maybe um, everything is stopped. Now it's and, okay. Uh, yeah, it's stopped now. It's okay. There now is it's no okay. lockdown anymore. No lockdown. Yeah, everything, uh, everything is returned to the normal normal condition. For so example, yeah. for, for example, now, uh, my, in our department, everything is normal. More, more than 20 or, 20 or 25 um, uh, operations yeah. were, was finished in our department daily. daily. Everything is okay. Yeah, yeah. That's, everything is back to normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, did it have any impact in delaying the, during the, 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 the height of the, the pandemic? There, there was any delay in delivering care to the patient? There was patient, you, you have postponed till the, the, the lockdown is lifted. The, any patient that you have to, to delay because of this pandemic? So, uh, I, I mean, during the period of the of the of the lockdown, if you 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 you, you stop delivering care to the patient just in this particular period of time. During the lockdown, yeah, during the lockdown, yeah, uh, time maybe yeah. uh, um, most the urologists they can cannot come to the uh, clinic to the yeah. hospital to see some patient who cannot yeah. do some elective surgeries. So most, uh, most uh, of urologists, they see patient is uh, online mm -hmm. and uh, with the APP. And then for emerging case, uh, we, must, uh, we must do it yeah. the before the operation. We must uh, check uh, uh, virus DNA is elective, you can do this. Yeah. Uh, Positive, po po positive. You can transfer this patient to the uh, the then the hospital. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This maybe this a little different from uh, Western country, Western hospital. Maybe in China, maybe in city, we have maybe four or three the then the hospital. Uh, so, uh, for, this, for this, for this infection, infected yeah. cases, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I have visited your department twice in 2017 and 2019, and I was impressed by the amount of cases you, you're doing uh, per day. You have seven OR uh, going simultaneously. Most of the cases are on biological laparoscopy cases. This is the kind of sitting every resident and fellow would dream to be trained in. How the training in the medical field is organized in China? How do you train your, your resident? So how many years, uh, what's the curriculum? Uh, actually, in, in China for a resident training, yeah. is 
getting more and more strict and more and more complicated. And uh, take my own students as an example. Uh, for example, okay, the first they must take uh, five years, uh, years and again uh, five years for uh, getting medical bachelor uh, degree, and then they must become my master degree for another three years. Yeah, and then they must uh, become my PhD degree students for a lot of three years. Yeah. You, you, you think it is almost uh, five, five, six, six, this yeah. 11. 11, 11 years. years. Yeah. After 11 years, uh -huh. it's only medical students, yeah. not a doctor, yeah. not a urologist. Yes. And then he, he, went, to, he went to do uh, work in my hospital. He did a, a joint uh, national residence training program post. This resident, resident training program may be usually is three years. It's three years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's three years. And uh, 11 and uh, a lot of is 40 years. 40. And then he, he can uh, be a certificated resident in my hospital. This mm -hmm. is not a specialist, not a urologist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. doctor. Mm. And if everything going through, going well, he can pass the, every examination and yeah. he can pass the, every inspection. Then he did a, a lot of five years, a lot of five years for training a urologist. Mm. And then you see this is 11, Plus. 14, and a lot of five years, 19 years, wow. 19, 19, 19 years. years. And then medical can, studies. He can, he can become a urologist consultant. Then, this then is, can, I think it's a long, long way to go. Okay, yeah. then you can go to fellowship for subspeciality. And you can do either stones or laparoscopy yeah, 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 or yeah, pathology yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is a lot of work two maybe years. Maybe two, two years more. Yeah, two, maybe one, two, two or in, in our department, maybe it's too many stone disease patient, maybe one year is now. Yeah, but exactly. a lot of syndrome, maybe at least, at least, at least two years for fellowship, for and indoor urology fellowship. And you have both clinical and research in, in fellowship. Yeah, both. I have both yeah. uh, basically research and clinical fellowship in our, in our department, in our, in is, our is syndrome. The two combined or separate? This is uh, separate. separate. You you can you apply to, to basic uh, research. Basic basic and the clinical together is two years. Two years. Uh, you can you can apply clinical fellowship only one year. Okay. What's the proportion of fellows you have from foreign countries? You have people from other countries. What's the proportion compared to the Chinese? One percent, two percent. Actually, for foreign, for yeah. foreign fellowship, for international fellowship and the national fellowship, uh, most for, because according to indo urologist Society regulation, mm. uh, it's only one fellow for basic and the clinical, two years yeah. fellowship is only one. And the clinical is only one. Each year for international fellowship, is only two, but only two you have. But if you don't need a uh, certificate from Indo Urology Society, you yeah. can come to my department. It's uh, one month, three months uh, yeah. for observer, for observership. It's okay, you can come. This is for uh, visiting. Maybe, yeah, visiting. It's, it's mm. okay, it's okay. Okay. But okay. mm. I think uh, most uh, one year. 20 or 25 for this kind of uh, visiting, visiting fellowship is okay. For one month, uh, three months is okay. Okay, well, what's your, the typical day you have in, in your department? You come to the, the hospital in the morning. So what do you do first? You go to surgery, you go to the round to see the patient, uh, you go to the, to the lab for research. How do you start your day? And, 
for me, for me, this for 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 me is how to spend a, a day for me. I think for me is really busy uh, every day, from Monday to from Monday to to okay. Sunday. Uh, for from Monday to Friday, the, in the morning, so uh, I must uh, go to general hospital for yeah. for administration work yeah. because I. I'm a vice president of my general hospital, mm -hmm. and I must do a lot of other administration workers. And then after all the administration and the workers, yeah. and then I can you do some surgery. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think average maybe three or four procedures for me. And then in the in the Monday afternoon, I, I go to outpatient department for see some uh, patient. Maybe one, in one afternoon, I have to see 20 cases. Wow. And, uh, yeah. and, and, and then uh, after, work, after work, I must uh, work at the home at least 20 or 20 or oh, when Five. Uh, I must uh, revise my paper, I must uh, do a lot right. of academic uh, things for some time. Academic so must, research. Uh, yeah, 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 this. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. So in China, urologists have modified the PCNL technique since the 1990s using uh, first the rigid derotroscope, the 8 and uh, 9F, uh, via the 14, 18F percutaneous tract provided by facial dilator and matched by peelway sheet to manage the upper urinary tract. And this is what's termed a Chinese mini PCNL. Uh, as for yourself, you coined another technique called super mini PCNL or SMP, uh, you are the inventor and the designer of the device. Tell us a, a, little, a little bit how the idea came about. What pushed you to do this? <laughs> <laughs> this is a very interesting question. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know, for many PCNL, uh, most of the urology always worry about how to remove this stone fragment. So, yeah. Because for standard PCN, you can use basket, you can, you can, you can use uh, forceps, remove the stone fragments. But for this is mini, it's uh, excess size, it's only 18 French. Maybe you use basket, you use uh, forceps, you must yeah. take a long, long operate, operative time. Yeah. Yes, and then most of the American urologists and the European urologists don't like this technique. And then my teacher, Professor Wu Kejun, yeah. he is a pioneer of Chinese mini PCNL and the developer develop is Pampo. This is Pampo. Pampo, you can Vacuum push. Effect, you can, yeah. yeah, you can flush. You can flush yeah. stone fragments out. And then maybe you can shorten this operative time. And you see, this is part, you use Pampo flush the stone fragment out. This is passive. This is passive. Sometimes you, you, you flush the stone fragment in the sheath and the, in the way and the half is out and the half the, is stay in, in the, the come back to the, to the pelvis, to yeah. the skin. And then I think you can use suction. Maybe suction yeah. and then you can, this is active. You suction and then you can remove this stone really fast. And then I develop this, this idea. Uh, actually, in, in this technique, you know, uh, you suction, you must have uh, uh, enough uh, irrigation. Uh, enough space. Not enough uh, irrigation, you suction is, uh, cannot use, uh, use uh, you cannot uh, you to remove it. the stone yeah. fragment. You, yeah. you only suction air, you cannot. You must action 
water, okay. the market, okay. the mass suction uh, irrigation, and then you can remove the stone uh, with the past. Then I wish, because you see, sometimes this is uh, mini, uh, nephroscope is really size, the size is small, and work in China is really small. Yeah. You, you use, you always use work in China for irrigation China, and mm -hmm. sometimes in short uh, global, in short uh, nasal fiber, is free, is free space for irrigation is limited. Then I develop mm -hmm. this uh, two layers mm -hmm. cheese. I irrigation flow in cheese mm -hmm. and then suction flow in cheese. We'll, it's we'll, one with cheese. We'll then see the movie and the, okay. it's well explained yeah. in the movie. In this video, we provide a step-by-step -step guide for the new generation super mini piercing out technique, SMP. The basic components of the SMP system are an 8-French militarized nephroscope with a newly designed irrigation suction shoes. The irrigation suction shoes is composed of a straight shoes and a handle. The handle consists of an irrigation port, a straight tube, and an abolic bifurcated tube at 45 degree. The suction port located at the end of the abolic tube. The straight shoes is two-layered metal structure. The space between the two layers of the shoes function as a channel for the irrigation water, and the central lumen of the shoes works as a conduit for continuous suction. The shoes had side holes at this distal tip, which allow egress of irrigation through the irrigation channel. The key feature of the irrigation suction shoes is to allow infrared and outflow respectively. The irrigation is delivered through the irrigation channel of the shoes. Thus, a one-way flow is created as the inflow that comes out of the irrigation channel of the shoes is immediately aspirated through the suction conduit of the shoes. The irrigation can create a vertex at the distal end of the shoes, and active suction can help to draw stone back into the suction conduit to remove it. During the section, the negative pressure can be adjusted by occurring or opening the pressure vent located in the access of a barrel tube. Now we introduce the SMP technique in one case who had a 1.8 cm stone in left kidney. The patient was placed in prone position. Percutaneous access to selective calyx was achieved under fluoroscopic guidance. The success of the puncture was confirmed both by free flow of the irrigation fluid and by fluoroscopic images. Using a guide wire, the dilatation was carried out with 10 French facial dilator. Then, a 14 French irrigation suction straight shoes with an obturator was advanced over the guide wire and introduced into a pelvic glacial system. After checking the position of the shoes under direct nephroscopic vision, the guide wire was removed and the handle was connected to the straight shoes. The irrigation port of the shoes was connected to an irrigation pump. The abolic tube of the shoes was connected to the specimen collection bottle and brought then to the negative pressure aspirator. Stone fragmentation was accomplished by using homing laser with 550 micrometer fiber. The tiny pulverized stone fragments would pass around the scope and evacuate through the abolic sluice. If the stone fragments were too large to pass around the scope inside the shoes, the scope could be withdrawn slowly to proximal to the bifurcation in order to create an unobstructed channel for large fragments evacuation. During the section, the negative pressure could be adjusted by either partially or completely occurring the pressure vent. At the end of the procedure, a single fluoroscopy imagery was obtained to assess the stone-free status. After removing the ureteric caster and the shoes, the wood was sealed with absorber gelatin.
all stone fragments had been collected in the specimen collection bottle. One day after surgery, a CT scan confirmed the patient was stone-free, and the patient was discharged following the CT scan. And they use always the laser with this device. You not, never use the pneumatic. No, not always the laser. Sometimes, yeah, uh, sometimes in, 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 in some hospital is not laser available. You can use new medical laser chips because in medical, this is a nephroscope. Working channel is the point is the uh, range. You can use really small, really small probe. You can yes. use new yes. medical visual chips, not only for laser machine. Yeah. Is this technique reproducible and teachable? Have you teach other urologists how to do I think it is, is, is really easy to learn for this technique because you can do PCNL, you can do SMP. It's because the puncture and dilation is All the these same. Are the same, yes. Yeah, it's the same. It's only you only change you uh, you uh, your mind uh, for for remove stone uh, you you tra tra traditional tra traditional PCM person you remove stone you remove stone is for for safe basket yeah, and for really mini PCM you will pump or flush and for this you suction this yeah. one is I think it's really easy for to to learn this okay. so another metabolic uh, evaluation. Yeah. I must uh, for some inactive patients or sometimes uh, young uh, pediatric little stone and uh, solitary stone and uh, very complex uh, little stone, for example, mud for us. What about uh, for, for you, you, you for this? Uh, which, which kind of patient do metabolic work up? Yeah, met metabolic workup usually for patients who have recurrence, they come mm -hmm. for several mm -hmm. times. So, yeah, but mm -hmm. if you have one one uh, one occasion, you have one stone, or mm -hmm. maybe five, ten years, you have uns there are no need to do metabolic e evaluation. Mm -hmm. But if it's someone who has recurrent stone, I think it's mm -hmm. it's 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 valid to do this. Uh, mm -hmm. And what's the most prevalent stone in, in, in China? What's the, the mm -hmm. most? Yeah, I, I think most common, or... most common is Keiko oxalate. Yeah, yeah. Cast yeah. oxalate, maybe more than 20, uh, like 18%. But now, you request the stone is priest in China. Maybe maybe ten years or twenty years ago the yeah. case stone is really low. So the maybe less than changed. five percent. Now maybe it's up to yeah. ten, fifteen or ten percent. What about in your country? Maybe your case uh, is increase uh, yeah. or decrease. O oxalate mo monohydrate is the, the most frequent. Yeah. Also sometimes it's as a mixture of the whole but yeah, yeah, it's sure. also increasing yeah. because of a change in the diet. People are eating yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of meat now. So yeah, that's I think so. Maybe probably so. is, is the explanation yeah. why the uric acid is, is picking up. Yeah. yeah. Because I ask, ask Indian doctor to ask pa, yeah. uh, in India, uh, many, many Indian people is vegetarian. Yeah. And then uric acid stone is not too much. very low, yeah. The incidence is very yes. low there. Yeah. yeah. 2012, you found the, uh, you are a co founder of the International Alliance for Urolithiasis, uh, now the largest stone alliance in the world, dedicated to research and treatment for stone disease. And uh, uh, maybe now more than 80 countries are represented with uh, 450 urologists. Uh, now we are at the eighth, eighth meeting of this organization. Uh, the ninth, unfortunately, was postponed due to the pandemic. The one was supposed to be in London this year was, report, uh, was reported. And uh, we were looking forward to come, coming again to, to this excellent meeting. 
the, the mission is to promote research and treatment of stone disease. It's become the major platform academic exchange in the field of urolithiasis. What is the secret of success of this organization? <laughs> Actually, uh, no, not a secret, a successful secret. Yeah. For, you know, you, you must know a large you, you stone disease society. It's named, uh, named, uh, I forget his name. And this is, uh, this society is only uh, one meeting each four years. And then 2000, 2012, Professor Ye and uh, Kemo and uh, discuss, uh, sit together, discuss, uh, set up a large uh, stone, stone disease organization. And uh, then, then for, for this society, it's been on focus for stone disease, basic and the clinical inspection. Um, actually, at the, at the beginning of setting up this organization, it's very difficult. It's very, very difficult. I must uh, invite a lot of international uh, urologists attend uh, my organization. Everybody know yeah, what this is, this is, uh, this is uh, what kind of organization, what kind of uh, society, what bala bala, but too many questions, too many yeah. confusion. And then I must uh, one by one and send the email and uh, explain this uh, uh, society mission, this society task, this, and then uh, yeah. Uh, for for everything, uh, for you know, I invite somebody to attention, attend my meeting, attend the workshop. I must pay pay everything, and now Absolutely. it's getting better. Uh, yeah. Every but it's all oh, this year is, it's, it's yeah different. The, Everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see yeah. the the results yeah, yeah. of the hard work. I, I, I think I think I think a sick, a successful secret is you must work hard. You must oldest. You must oldest. Mm. Yeah, this is really important. Uh, uh, because you oldest, everybody for you, for me is oldest. I think it's really, really important. And, and then you see. must, you cannot, you cannot make money from no, this society. Of course, society. yeah. But, but yeah, you make really science. Important. Yeah. You make science yeah. and you make friends. <laughs> yeah, make friends. <laughs> make <laughs> economic. <laughs> how, how do you don't see make a man? This will really be important. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. How do you see <laughs> the future of the uh, IEA? I think in the future, in, in, in IEA future is yeah. uh, is uh, is bright. It's bright, it's bright. Yeah, bright. certainly. Yes, yeah, bright, yeah. bright. <laughs> because with Professor Ye, Professor Campbell, and me, and the other members, yeah. Uh, Make it make it this organization is uh, for academic, yeah. is for make friends, not make money. Yeah, not profits. This is okay. This is really important. Great. Do Do you have a plan <laughs> to set up the uh, IEU uh, training fellowship research center outside China? Maybe one day. <laughs> uh, what is uh, yeah, for this great IU membership, which uh, I must uh, uh, your voice is not clear. Yeah. Pa pardon? And, uh, you, if you have any plan to set up uh, training and research facilities outside China for the IOE. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, I really hope uh, do some uh, IU workshop uh, in out of China for Morocco ah, or another country, and then I think uh, sometimes you can you can do some uh, small workshop with limited uh, twenty or thirty urologists, and then you can 
make a discussion. You can see some live surgery. And I think it's this is good. Mm. This is better than big conference. Big conference, you can not make a intense discussion. I think it's good. I hope maybe this year is, is very difficult. Yeah, and the next year maybe I can yeah, do probably, probably. I can do some this year, this year workshop. Is in, is in a flexible yeah. and the basic mm -hmm. stone basic research workshop in your city, in your in your your country. It's good. You can organize. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> You're always welcome. <laughs> Well, uh, Professor Zaregator, Chinese researchers are ahead in different fields of science, and if anything new to come in the field of both stone research and stone management is going to be from Asia and from China in particular. So we will stay tuned for more breakthrough, and I am sure you will be sharing this generously with the rest of the world. Professor Zhang, it's always a pleasure talking to you, and before leaving, we will repeat Yay, er, san, yay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yay. <laughs> it's great talking to you. I, I'm, I'm, me too. <laughs> uh, very, very See fun. you. I'm very happy. <laughs> Good.